So in today's video, we're going to be going over a pretty cool probability problem that I saw. There are three problems that should be on your screen right now, and they each build off each other in terms of level of difficulty. And if you stick around till the end, the solution to the last one is pretty cool. So right now you can go ahead and pause the video and give these problems a try for yourself before we jump into the solutions together. So now that you've had a chance to try working the problem on your own, let's take a look at the solution. So the problem says, I have two kids, the older child is a girl, and what is the probability that both children are girls? So if you think about this intuitively, given the fact that you have two kids and the older one is a girl, and if it wants to know the probability that both children are girls, all this is asking is, what is the probability that the younger child is also a girl? And obviously this is just one half. But I'm going to run through this problem again using uh, set notation and conditional probability definitions because I think it'll make the next two problems make a lot more sense. And so we have another video posted where we explain all of the set notation if you want to check that out, but I'll give a crash course right now. So if you recall the probability of A given B, the given being the line in between the A and the B, that's equal to the probability of A intersect B divided by the probability of just B. So if you look in the Venn diagrams um, on the right, the left side circle is the probability of event A happening, and the right side is the probability of event B happening. But we're given that event B occurs, so we're only concerned with that entire B circle. And we want to know the probability that event A occurs given this B has already occurred. So what we care about is that uh, intersection between set A and set B, which is the purple shaded in between, and we're going to divide that by the entire blue shaded part, which is set B. So if we write this problem out in the set notation, we have the probability of C, o, C sub O, which is the older child, and C sub Y, which is the younger child, the probability that both of them are girls, given that the older child is a girl. And so using the formula, we can say that this is equal to the probability of C sub O and C sub Y being girls and the probability of C sub O is a girl divided by the probability of C sub O being a girl. So the numerator is pretty simple. It's essentially saying the probability that both children are girls and the older child is a girl, which is just the probability that both of them are girls, which is one half times one half. And the denominator is the probability of just the older child being a girl, which is just one half. So we end up with one half times one half divided by one half, which simplifies to just one half. So now we're going to move on to the second problem. And this is just a variation of the first problem, but with a slight change in wording. So now the problem reads, I have two kids, at least one of them is a girl, and they want to know what the probability that both kids are girls. Now you may be thinking this is the exact same problem as before, but this slight change in wording makes all the difference, as you'll see. So if you think about this intuitively, there are now three possibilities. Uh, the first possibility is that child one is a girl and child two is a boy. The second case is that child one is a girl and child two is also a girl. And the third case is that child one is a boy and child two is a girl. So we have the same four original cases, minus the case where child one and child two are both boys. And so since we have these three cases and all are equally likely, the chances that both of them are girls, which is just case two, is one third. Which is pretty crazy if you think about it. So now we're gonna go through the same problem using conditional probability rules. So if we rewrite the problem in a set notation, the problem is basically asking what the probability of C1 being a girl and C2 being a girl, given that C1 or C2 is a girl. So using the same formula as before, we can rewrite this as the probability of C1 being a girl and C2 being a girl, and the probability of C1 or C2 being a girl, divided by the probability of C1 or C2 being a girl. So the numerator again is pretty easy. 
logically that's basically just saying what the probability of both children being a girl and at least one of them being a girl so that's just the probability that they're both girls which is just one half times one half the denominator is the probability that child one or child two is a girl so usually when you have an or it makes sense to add the probabilities together but if you'll take a look at the Venn diagram on the side here, if you let the left side be uh, C1 and the right side be C2, you'll see when we shade the left side in all pink and we shade in the right side all blue, the overlap is in purple. And that part is counted twice. So to find this true probability, we need to add the probability of C1 plus the probability of C2 minus the probability of both of them happening. So we don't count that part twice. So on the top we get one half times one half, which is one fourth, and on the bottom we get one half plus one half minus one half times one half. So the top is one fourth and the bottom is three fourths. So we simplify and we get one third as before. So this third problem kind of goes off the rails a little bit. We're gonna change the wording again. We're gonna say, I have two children. One of them is a boy born on a Tuesday. And we wanna know what the probability is that I have two boys. And you may be thinking, what the heck does him being born on a Tuesday have to do with anything? But you'll see below. If we think about this intuitively, we have four cases. The first case is that the first child is a girl who's born on any day of the week. And the second child is a boy who's born on Tuesday. The second case is that the first child is a boy who's born on any day of the week. And the second child is a boy who's born on Tuesday. And the third case is the opposite of case one. It's the case where the first child is a boy born on a Tuesday and the second child is a girl born on any day. And the last case is that the first child is a boy born on Tuesday and the second child is a boy born on any day of the week. Now we're gonna count the ways for each of these cases. So case one can happen in seven different ways, which is that because the girl can be born on any day of the week, which is seven days. The same can be said about case two. The boy can be born on any of the seven days of the week whereas the boy on Tuesday can only be born on one day of the week. Case three is the same, seven ways. But case four is seven ways minus one for six ways because we already counted one of the seven ways in case two, and that is the case where both children are boys born on Tuesday. So we don't want to count that twice, so we subtract out one. We're only concerned with case two and case four because that's the chance that I have two boys. So those two cases are 13, 7 plus 6. And you divide that by all of the ways, which is 7 plus 7 plus 7 plus 6, which is 27. So the probability that I have two boys is 13 divided by 27. So now we're going to go through this problem again, and this time use conditional probability rules. So if we rewrite the problem in the correct notation, it is the probability of child 1 and child 2 being boys, given that child 1 or child 2 is a boy who's born on a Tuesday. So using the same formula as before, we can rewrite this as the probability of child 1 and child 2 being boys, and child 1 is the child that's on, born on a Tuesday, or child 1 and child 2 are boys, and child 2 is the one who's born on Tuesday. And the denominator is just the probability that child one or child two is a boy who's born on Tuesday. So now the same thing as last time, with an or statement, you want to add the two probabilities together, but you have to subtract out the joint probability so you don't double count it. So that's what we're gonna do below. We have the probability that child one is a boy and child two is a boy and child one is born on a Tuesday. We have one half for the probability that child one's a boy times one half the probability that child two is a boy, times one seventh, the probability that child one is born on Tuesday. Then we're gonna add that to the same one half times one half times one seventh. Then we're gonna subtract out the probability that both are boys and both are born on a Tuesday. So that'll be one half times one half times one seventh times one seventh. And the denominator is the probability of child one or child two being specifically a boy and born on Tuesday. So the probability of child one being a boy born on Tuesday is one half times one seventh. And it's the same for child two, one half times one seventh. And then you have to subtract out the probability that they're both boys and born on Tuesday, which is one half times one half times one seventh times one seventh. 
So if we simplify all this down, we get 1 14th minus 1 over 196 divided by 1 7th minus 1 over 196, and that equals 13 over 27. Before we end the video, I want to briefly talk about the differences between the answers to the three problems. The reason the answers are different is that as I give more specific information about one of my children, it becomes more likely that I'm only talking about that one of them rather than both. The answer to the first problem is one half because there is no joint probability. That is, the two kids are entirely distinct from each other because I specified that one is older and one is younger. But in the second problem, I said at least one of the kids is a girl. The ambiguity in this statement makes it more likely that I'm talking about both children rather than just one. But in the third problem, I give more information even though I still keep it slightly ambiguous. The answer can't be one half as in problem one because there is still a small chance that both kids are boys and are born on a Tuesday. But it is still less likely that I am talking about both kids than in problem two. This increase in information is why the answer is closer to one half than one third. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're new and hit the bell to get post notifications so you don't miss a video. Also, please comment if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, and we'll try to get to them.